Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another Indie Game Friday, where each week I take a look at a different independent computer role-playing game. This week I'm taking a look at an action roguelike with RPG elements that's been out for a few years now. Developed and published by Scraping Bottom Games, Victorum was released back in 2017. Victorum is, as stated, an action roguelike, and although it does have fairly strong RPG elements in terms of inventory and character development, it's more akin to other action RPGs in that regard. Its key selling points are that it has destructible environments, and there are ways to shape your spells on the fly as you cast them to modify their effects. Plot-wise, you are a mage called a Victorum, being hunted by the Inquisition. You travel through a land filled with multiple factions, from outcasts to corrupted monstrosities to inquisitors, seeking to track down the Grand Inquisitor who sentenced you to death to get your revenge. When you first start the game, you can select a game mode. There's an abridged slash hardcore version where things are gone through relatively quickly. There's the classic version that has gameplay broken up into chapters. And then there's an expanse that places the entire adventure in a single chapter. You can customize your character's look and name before you head in, set an overall difficulty level from five levels, pick a hardcore character if you want that enters a permadeath mode. I believe the abridged version automatically defaults to that mode. As you play, you do unlock starting titles through your actions, which effectively creates different character builds, at least character builds that are unlocked right from the start. Finally, you can inspect your inventory for a preview of your character's stats, and I'll actually go over the stats right here since, you know, it's pretty much easy to go into them. Although Fictorum is indeed an RPG light, it has a surprising amount of stats given that. Your character can have permanent passives depending on their title, as well as the three basic stats of health, mana, and stamina. Mana regeneration and stamina regeneration follow, which affect your overall regeneration rates. Health can only be regained through events or by consuming potions found on each level. There's a movement speed and a jump height, which are important to get around maps quickly. Casting speed that lets you cast spells faster. Physical and magic resistance that reduce damage received for those particular types. Spell range and speed that affects every one of your overall spellcasting spells. Shaping bonus that grants additional bonuses to runes. Negative status duration that lets you recover from status effects that much faster. Cooldown reduction that reduces the cooldowns of special abilities. Mana threshold which reduces the damage according to your current mana. And then damage absorbed by mana which can redirect a certain amount of damage you take to mana instead of health. There's also left, top, and right rune initial power, which you can uh, raise to benefit your spells without you actually having to use the spell shaping. There's general enhanced damage and additional damage for each of the element types, fire, ice, lightning, physical, arcane, corruption, earth, and wind, which increase spell damages of the appropriate type, of course. There's mana after kill that restores a little bit of your mana every time you kill something, and then mana leech, which gives you mana for damage done. Shaping speed increases the speed that you can apply runes to your spell, and reduced mana cost reduces the uh, spell and or ability costs according to which one you have up. Your character has an inventory to store items that you pick up, and you may equip gear to enhance any of the above stats. There's a slot for your chest, your shoulders, gloves, boots, and then two rings. These items are generated in color-coded rarities and may have various affixes similar to a hack-and-slash action RPG or Diablo-like. Some items may have associated abilities or passives that grant you a special ability or a bonus, or may be enchanted as such during the enchantment system during play. The enchanting system can be accessed via the inventory. You can place an item into the slot provided and use Essence, the in-game currency, to enchant it, increasing its base scores, or you can disenchant it to gain essence. You can extract an existing passive or special ability from an item, destroying it, therefore, or you can imbue a new one, imprinting an ability or passive from a scroll into an item permanently. Finally, there is the spell system. Characters can equip up to four spells or scrolls. Scrolls are just scrolls that give you access to an ability or spell, while the spell book proper gives you spells that can be modified by runes. Each spell can be equipped with up to three spell-shaping runes, which may grant certain bonuses to damage or mana just flatly, but also may affect what the spell does. These runes can be equipped into each slot of each spell and switched out where necessary. Like gear, runes may have a rarity, modifying the impact they have, and many are limited to only spells of a certain type. Some of them can provide 
certain options, such as letting a fire spell set an enemy on fire or having a lightning spell stun an enemy. Once in the game, you are presented with a node-based map, as well as a potential text event. If you've played games like FTL Faster Than Light, then this is very much like that, to the point of being a complete ripoff. The text-based events may offer randomized rewards within that event's parameters, and some event solutions may require certain kinds of spells known. After you've finished a node's event, you are then given the opportunity to head to an adjoining node. The end result that you're looking for is to get to the exit, indicated by a highlighted skull. Although not visible on the map initially, the Inquisition is indeed chasing you and is represented by a highlighted front that advances after you take each turn, encompassing more and more nodes. Again, very much like FTL. You may also choose to skip your turn by resting, which lets you regain hit points but also lets the Inquisition advance freely. At each node, you will once more be faced with an event. Different nodes are associated with different factions, and some nodes may allow you to purchase gear and heal your character, represented by a storefront. These these storefronts use Essence, the in-game currency, of course. When you reach the ending node in most game types, you then advance to the next chapter of the game. For most nodes, the end result of many ev events, you are thrust into combat. The uh, combat is where the action RPG element of the game kicks in. These areas are represented by randomly generated levels, effectively floating islands, which you can very well fall off of, so be careful. Within the combat arena, so generated, you get health, mana, and stamina bars in the lower left, and then your abilities and spell quick bar in the bottom middle. You don't have a melee attack, although there are some spells that can mimic those, but you can move about, run, and jump. Abilities are generally character only, while spells have a target. You also can enter a clairvoyance mode that highlights lootable objects, your goals, and enemies even through terrain, although this takes mana to sustain. You can cast the selected spell that you've got to indicated in its basic form simply by left clicking. Different spells may have different effects, but usually may be aimed either at a distance or just by facing your character about to an enemy. In order to spell shape, you instead right click which slows down time. You then have the runes that you've selected presented on the screen and moving the mouse toward each rune or side of the triangle formed builds the spell's effects towards those runes. When you release, the spell is cast and the spell will be modified by the runes you selected. A fireball can be made to explode on impact via high explosive, you can toss multiples of them via multicast, etc, etc. Other spell types will have vastly different sorts of rooms available to them. It should be noted that this spell shaping mode does take mana to sustain even while you're selecting runes, and you can cast some spells while out of mana, except that they cost health instead. As opportunities to regain health are limited and you don't naturally regenerate it, sacrificing health for anything is usually not the greatest of ideas, but it's nice to have the option. Items can drop from enemies, which are generally automatically added to your inventory, or may be acquired from containers and houses. It should be noted that structures, trees, and so forth may be damaged and destroyed by both your and your enemy's spells, and collapsing destruction can cause damage to characters they fall on. Unfortunately, destroying a building may destroy any unlooted items within it, so do be careful about that. Levels may also contain chests and hidden chests, which do not show up on your clairvoyance mode, and may contain items or essence or both. The general goal for most levels is simply to access the Nexus exit. Many times this exit is locked by towers, requiring you to destroy the towers first. You do not generally have to kill all of the enemies within an area, however some events do add additional goals such as slaying particular enemies or defending a town, which can simply vary the way that you play each level. Under the core game mode, actually finishing an entire chapter may allow you to grant a passive boost to certain of your character's stats. And so the gameplay loop goes, proceed through events and battles toward the end of each chapter, eventually working up towards facing the Grand Inquisitor, during which you manage your equipment, improve your build, and pick spells to suit the playstyle that you've got for that particular run. As far as presentation goes, graphically the game does look a little bit clunky. It, it looks somewhat dated. Now, it doesn't look bad, per se, but it does look like the game came out several years before it actually did, and that in and of itself is a few years ago now, so... It is noticeable. This is most noticeable in terms of the destructible environments. Buildings collapse into large chunks that bounce around in a somewhat janky manner. Trees topple, roots up, and roll around awkwardly, and so forth. In fact, the physics in the game is a little bit janky in general. Jumping feels a little bit floaty, and you can catch quite a bit of air time with a normal jump. This is usually only a problem because of how hilly most of the islands are, and the fact that you do indeed take falling damage. 
With health one of the main resource management challenges of the game, this can be a pretty bad thing if you just walk off a cliff and just kind of float for a very long time and then hit the ground at a much, much farther rate than you really intended to. The sound design is at least not that bad, although I would have liked to have seen the battle music not kick in while I was burning down structures. It usually only kicks in while enemies are around. So every time it fired off while I was burning down some houses, it, it, I kept looking around expecting to get attacked while torturing just some villager's house and there weren't any enemies there. So presentation-wise, it's passable. I mean, it's not bad. The exploration part of the game is so close to FTL that it may as well be ripped off and the levels are a bit repetitive, as most procedurally generated stuff is. So that having been said, I actually did have decent amounts of fun with it, especially when I got builds, RNG willing of course, that synergized with the spells that I found. Laying waste to massive groups of enemies and knocking down buildings was fairly fun, and as for the strategic portion of the game, one can pick worse games than FTL. My main criticism as far as gameplay went, was that it was sometimes difficult to target faraway enemies with certain spells. Although each spell has a different sort of area and firing mechanism, of course, quite a few simply lob a ball or other projectile into an arc, like a mortar, making one have to aim the camera fairly high to get any sort of range, which means that you're not actually looking at your target. With a hilly terrain, this also means that enemy closers could go ahead and usually close the distance while you weren't looking at them and do so fairly quickly. Indeed, some enemies I encounter would just natively ran much faster than the main character, even early in the game before I could do anything to increase run speed. Once I unlocked a few different starting titles, these problems were mitigated simply by focusing on different sort of spells. Victorum, it's not a deep game all in all. It's just about building a character up to be a decent spellcaster and then laying waste to enemies and their buildings. But you know what? Sometimes that's all you need, and after a week like I had this week, I found it to be a pleasant diversion. I would, however, try to find it as part of a bundle or on sale if you're interested. And, of course, you have to like the sort of loot grind of action RPGs to begin with, or else, you know, it's probably not going to be your thing. Anyway, on that note, I'll wrap it up here. This has been the RPG Crawler with my Indie Game Friday Fictorum. As always, I'll leave a link below. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like, comment if you got any feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content, both tabletop and computer. Until next time, take care and goodbye. And if you are still watching, I would like to take the opportunity to thank my supporters, the top tiers of which are listed on the screen, without whose support I would not have been able to offer the variety of content that I have on this channel throughout the years. If you're feeling particularly generous and would like to join them, you can support the channel. There are a variety of options to do so. I have a Patreon, a Subscribestar, as well as channel memberships enabled. If you are not in a position to contribute, simply leaving a like, a comment, or sharing my videos are all wonderful ways to help the channel grow without spending a dime and are all greatly appreciated.